The next day, Bruce sat quietly in Jackson's office, staring now at the wet streaks of Gotham while the detective sat across from him, reading the front, front page news. Madeline's manila folder was open on the table, the document stacked in a neat pile. Finally, Bracken threw the newspaper down and leaned forward on the desk onto her elbows. What happened? Bruce asked. Tracken pushed the paper towards him so that he could read the top headline. Police uncover Nightwalker hideout. There was an unfinished underground path. She muttered, like the ones that connect the buildings downtown. Bruce asked carefully. As he was wording each sentence. As far as anyone. He knew nothing about the incident. Draken nodded. You know the tunnel running underneath Wayne Tower, right? Yeah, Bruce replied. Wayne Tower had one of those underground pathways, as did the Seco Financial Building. And every other skyscraper. Look, mm, on hot summer days, commuting on the surface of the city felt like walking in an oven or on those freezing or on days when freezing storms rolled in people could take the subterranean routes and never have to set foot outside well it was part of a subterranean route that had been defunded by the city the night walkers apparently turned the section of the underneath the section underneath the Bellingham building into a storage facility for weapons. <laughs> the previous night replayed itself over and over in Bruce's mind. He and Diane had Hint headed back to their concert in silence and managed to convince Harvey that it had been questioned by police. Something crazy going on down, down the street, Bruce said. Cops are investigating that corner again and have been questioning people all the way up these blocks. Barely minutes later, they heard sirens reach the corner of the Bellingham building. It seemed to verify their story. for Bruce, but also the possibility of putting Harvey in harm's way kept them both mute. Although he kept expecting the police to call him or track him to question him, no one seemed to know that he, they'd been there. How did the police find the hideout? Draken rubbed her neck in weariness and nodded. Officers got an anonymous call. He knew someone had opened up an unfinished tunnel. There was, unconscious man. there was an unconscious man in the bunker room, a supposed supply runner for the Nightwalkers. He was low in the ranks and had been assigned to move their weapons to a new location. Bruce kept his expression caught curious. Did he say why they were doing this? I don't think he was ranked high enough to, within the Night Walkers to know. He revealed the location he was going to move the stuff to, but when the police checked it out, everything was already gone. Another Night Walker had already moved the weapons out, cleared the place clean. He didn't say anything else. In fact, the poor... Draken hesitated. Kept saying something about a masked robber or someone who had attacked him. Kept saying it must have been an undercover cop. Couldn't have get couldn't give any more details than that. 
the Night Walkers might have made some enemies in the local gang scene by en encroaching on their space. Maybe I can get something out of Madeline. Draken laced her fingers together and gave him an uncertain frown. I'm not sure about this. She might know the reason behind all that stockpile. Back inside again and took a swig of her coffee. I don't like keeping this up. You're not supposed to be this deeply involved. And the fact that she keeps talking to you unsettles me. Also, I don't want to get on your guardian's bad side. Alfred. Bruce hadn't mentioned any of this to him yet nor explained why his nightmares had been getting steadily worse, haunted by shadows of dark halls or a girl with long black hair. But I'm still sitting here in your office, Bruce replied, pushing his other thoughts away. You're still briefing me on what's happening with the Nightwalkers, right? That must mean you... Draken looked at Bruce with serious eyes. Remember, remember who her past victims were. Philanthropists with a lot of money. She targeted them for their money, stole vast amounts before killing them in their own homes. You saw their deaths. She hesitated. You already know. of choice. I'll be okay. She's locked away in Arkham. But we're close now. We can find a way to unearth the Nightwalkers all the way up to your boss. Draken stared into her coffee for a long moment. Don't put a wire on her. She'll be able to tell. Just let me keep talking. Finally, Draken leaned back in her chair. You get another conversation with her. One. We'll see how it goes from there. A thunderstorm swept through Gotham City, and by the following morning, the sky outside the asylum's windows still looked black as night. When Bruce went downstairs for his shift and stopped by Madeline, her sitting upright in bed. For an instant, he thought that perhaps she had been taken out of her cell before he noticed her curled up in a tight ball on the bed. All he could see were her white prison jumpsuit and the spill of her black hair. <laughs> you were right. He said after a long pause. She didn't move. She seemed to be staring off into space. Her eyes concentrating on a spot somewhere on the floor. Her meal tray was on the other side of the room. Her napkin, usually folded into an intricate origami shape, was crumpled near. An unsettling feeling weighed on Bruce. Something is wrong. Madeline? Can you hear me? Another pause for a moment. Bruce thought that the guards had changed the windows on her cell door to resound to it. Or that she was lost in deep thought. Or maybe she was ignoring him in the way she sometimes did. It made him feel silly for beating for being here and he was about to turn around and step away from the door when her when her answer finally came what do you want bruce Wayne? her voice she asked her voice 
was quieter today. As full as, not as full of its usual bravado as usual. And irritated, the feeling of unease in Bruce's stomach grew. I don't know if you heard the news, he replied. seemed to know everything after all. The police uncovered one of the night walkers and they found weapons in at Bellingham at the Bellingham building. Congratulations. She replied before he could finish. She shifted a little, loosening out of her tight ball so that he could see her face with more clearly. She looked at him without lifting her head. You can follow your actions after all. Gone today was her playful nature, the teasing smirk she usually gave him, and it and in its place was someone cold. Bruce blinked, confused. He didn't know why it bothered him that she seemed upset today. Why are you doing this? He asked. Why did you wait until I came along before you started feeding information to the police? You clearly knew about that room. You knew about the brick wall. Maybe I decided to turn over and leave. Madeline replied, her voice dripping bit at her sarcasm. Let's try that again. Maybe I decided to turn over and leave. That's a little better. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That was a little weird, but... I just had to try something. The hall fell silent. Bruce looked closer at her. When his gaze traveled to her arm, he noticed something new. A blue black bruise on her upper arm. Four bruises to exact as if left there by someone's hand. He studied her other arm. Now he could see red scratch marks near her wrist, as if someone had tried to restrain her. Madeline was a criminal, a notorious killer, jailed for three brutal murders. But in this moment, Bruce forgot that all he saw before him was a girl his age, curled into a tight, protective ball something vulnerable. Muffle th <laughs> Muffle th momentos uh, uh. Let's try that again Muffled I'm gonna stop right here because apparently I'm having trouble with muffled thunder. I actually am. Okay. See you.